Mm, good morning. Good morning, good morning, and good morning. Hey, I just... Boom, shakalaka. That's how that goes. Hey, good morning, folks. Good morning. We are running. It's about five minutes after nine. So glad that you are here. It is a absolute stunning day in the heart of the Arkansas Delta. So glad that you were here. When you get in, get on, grab your Bible, grab your journal, and of course, grab that amazing cup of coffee and join us. It is time for the chat this morning. It is time to dive deeper into that incredible book of 1 Samuel where we have been spending our time. Uh, you've got time right now. If you can, hey, right, just real quick, hey, text somebody and just say, hey, you need to go here and uh, just hang out with us this morning. It is a good day. I, uh, I saw something on the way in this morning that I have not seen in a long time. And uh, it kind of scared me. I'm just going to be real honest with you. It scared me. I was driving, of course, I live south of town, and uh, I, I always come in via the uh, the bypass, okay, via the bypass, and uh, I saw, are you ready for this? I saw the sun this morning, and uh, and I have not seen the sun in quite some time, so uh, uh, I, was, I was kind of excited, actually, I was kind of giddy, if you just don't know the truth, so uh, just wow, just wow. Folks, come on in, grab yourself a chair. And uh, and and uh, just just say hey to us when you get in. I'm getting everything shared, and I want you to do the same thing. Feel free to hit that share button. We want to do that. Uh, how is your Tuesday? I almost said Monday, dear Lord. Uh, how is your Tuesday? I am so glad that you are here. Everybody, come on in. I think I see the Allen sneaking in. Tommy Arlene, you in the building? Is that you? Come on in and say howdy at me. Let me know who all is here. Let me know what's uh, what is taking place out here in the Delta. Come on in. Oh, it is like I said. It is a gorgeous day, man. I snuck out. Okay, y'all remember yesterday? Uh, I told you that you know with all that god awful storm that we had this heavy, heavy, heavy condensation in in, in uh, my carport. Y'all remember that? Well, I put that fan out there like I, like I told you. I put a fan circulated, and do you know it took it till this morning? Uh, to get that, just half of it dry. I mean, just half of the darn thing dry. So I was really kind of kind of aggravated, but uh, I, I got half of it dry, and this morning when I got out, I moved it over so it is uh, trying to dry out the others. But uh, it uh, it is drying, thank the Lord, but no kidding. It is just, uh, it is a gorgeous day out there, and if you happen to get out, I want to encourage you to get out, enjoy the sunshine. It is B-E-A-U-T-I-F-U-L, beautiful, this morning here in the heart of the Arkansas Delta. This is the day, even Gloria has already gone to Walmart this morning uh, before she came to the church campus. So uh, if that tells you a whole lot, but now, uh, I, I, Judy Davis, you sneaking in the building? Good morning, Miss Judy. Uh, but now Gloria came in. Are y'all ready for this? Uh, Gloria said that she has heard something on the uh, on the weather this morning, that we are expecting a rain and snow mix this morning. A rain and snow mix. Now, folks, I ain't got no time for that mess, okay? I, 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 I no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. Everybody's getting in the house this morning. Come on in. Come on in. Man, it is good to see y'all. Good to see y'all. Like I like I said a little earlier, I saw something I haven't seen in a while. I saw the sun. Good morning, Mary Weddington. How you doing this morning, lady? Hey, hey, guess what, Mary? You you may have already Gloria's already been to Walmart. Uh yeah, the, the preacher was running short of coffee. So uh uh Gloria run to the to the uh Walmart this morning. Thank the Lord. I'll be able to survive my day. So it is a good day. Judy, you are here. Good to see you. Folks, get in. Say howdy to me. Let me know who all is hanging out with the preacher this morning. It is a good day. Man, I, you know, I'm running a little bit behind. The batteries are not connecting. Yesterday was a long day for me. Uh, after the chat yesterday morning, I had a few things uh, I needed to take care of here. And then uh, I'd say, I knew you'd want to go. I knew you'd want to go to Walmart. And, uh, and I headed to West Memphis uh, shortly after uh, 11 yesterday morning because you know, I had that big meeting yesterday. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that here in just a minute. And I uh, uh, had meetings yesterday afternoon, things to do. And I did not get back home until after 9 o'clock last night. 
And uh, uh, it was just a long, physically, mentally draining day. And so my body did not want to function this morning when I got out of bed. Let's, let's just say that after I turn this thing off, I'm going to be plugging an IV of coffee into my arm this morning. I've got to get some morning. Judy Davis going to the doctor in Memphis today for a checkup. Okay, Miss Judy, number one, be safe going over, okay? You guys be safe traveling. Uh, uh, we all know what it's like to drive in uh, in Memphis traffic, so you just be careful. Number two, best of absolute luck, and we are praying that you get a killer, I mean a killer report, and that you are doing well, and that uh, he will take the next steps with you in your rehab. We are so excited for you. Good morning, everybody. Come on in and say howdy to me. Let me know who all is here. Please make sure that you hit the share button. Okay, hit that share button. That is exactly how we grow our ministry. We can only go as far as you uh, sending it out. And so that's how vital the, the ministry is. Um, wherever you uh, attend church, wherever you, you, you worship at on Sunday mornings or Wednesday nights or whatever the case may be, if you watch online, or even if you're if if you attend on campus, and you've got that broadcast on your phone, hit that share button. It's vital to the ministry of your church that you hit that share button. So if you will do that, we want to just say thank you and appreciate that. Hey guys, I have got this is a great one for me. I've got a a, a buddy of mine that's hanging out here in the office with me this morning. Uh, you typically see him and his wife online with us on on uh, uh, the mornings here on the chat, and that is Gary Gustin. Gary is a, a buddy of mine who lives, uh, man, he lives so far away. He lives in that metropolis of Colt, Arkansas. Of course, we all know how big that, that metropolis is, and Gary is very active. He and his wife, Kim, are very active in Colt Baptist Church with Brother Clint Haynes. And, uh, and so I'm just thankful that uh, we are brothers in Christ and that we can come together and uh, do different things and share. And, uh, and Gary is here. So, Gary, I'm going to flick this thing around if I can figure out my switch here and uh, let you say hello to everybody. Let me see here. There we go. Hey, Gary. Hey, good morning. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> man, man, Gary is in here. He's got his coffee. Gary, where's your coffee? There he is. He's got he four. Here. Uh, Gary's just hanging out with me. Uh, uh, Gary was with us yesterday at the, uh, uh, the associational meeting. And, uh, and, and, and Gary told me, and, and, and I've already had to pray for Gary this morning. Gary had to, had to ride over there with, uh, brother Clint Haynes to West Memphis. And so he was stuck in the car with brother Clint all the way over and all the way back last night. And so I'm glad to know Gary that you survived that thing. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you survived it. Uh, uh, folks, I, I want to share a little bit about Gary. He did not know I was going to do this. And so I'm catching him off guard. Um, uh, First of all is we we love Brother Clint. We love Colt Baptist Church and the family that's there. Uh, and they have started something new on their uh, uh, Facebook page. And it's something called Stories. It's very simple. It's, it's called Stories. And, uh, and what it is, and what it is, good morning, Brian. Hey, you guys be safe going to Vanderbilt. Okay, you guys be safe. Uh, and, and what this is, uh, this is this is a brainchild of Brother Clint, and uh, I think is that right? It is. Is that a Brother Clint idea, or is that uh, yours? No, that was actually my wife. That's your wife. Okay, okay. I stand corrected. That is that's Kim's idea. Uh, it's a phenomenal idea, by the way. Uh, and and what it is, it is a a uh, a video telling of people's testimonies. Is that yes, a good description? Yes. yes. Uh, God works through us, yeah, you know, using yeah. us despite ourselves. Absolutely, yeah. Well, you know, here's the deal: everybody has a story. Yes, everybody has a story. You have a story. Kim has a story. Yeah, I have a story. You, you just you, you point a finger, and everybody has a story. And so, if you're if you're listening this morning, if you're watching this online, you have a story to tell. And and it is it's your story. You can't take it from somebody else. Now there's probably bits and pieces. The end result is the same thing. That's it. That's it. The end result is the same. Jesus Christ. Absolutely. But it's how we get there, and what we do after. That's right. But we all have a story, and so this this uh, this concept, this this new uh, 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 addition, if you will, uh, to to Colbert Church is people of the members of the church are video telling their story. Yes. They're just telling the story. 
It's so simple, yet it's just so amazing. And and uh, you and Kim were, I guess, the, uh, the the prototype. You you did the first one, is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And so what I what I really, I, guys, I just I want to encourage you that uh, sometime after, don't do it right now. You got to stay with me. Don't you? Don't you leave? Uh, sometime today or or sometime later after the broadcast this morning is I want you to get on Facebook and I want you to search Colt Baptist Church, C-O-L-T, Colt Baptist Church. And and that is our sister church, literally it's five miles down the road. And I want you to get on their page and I want you to just scroll down. And I think there is now two that's posted. There's three of them, actually. Okay, I hadn't seen the third one. Clint had done his. Okay, I have not, I have not seen Clint. Yes. Uh, and, and, and I really want to encourage you to go down and to just see what God is doing in the lives of everyday common people. Yes. It's you know it's just like the disciples. You know, Gary, I taught through uh, I, I taught through the disciples, the twelve disciples here not too long ago. You know? Yes. Uh, and how they are just ordinary guys. That's right. They are they are common everyday nobodies. Yes. And yet look what God did. He took he took a nobody and he turned them into the men that flipped turned the world upside down. Yes, totally changed the world. And that's it. And so all God wants is for you to be available and for you to be obedient. Obedient. Yes, sir. Yes. That's it. Mary, is that you walking down the sidewalk? I, I, I that is you, isn't it, Gary? Yes. Yeah, that is. Yes. Yeah, that is that is uh, that's Gary and his uh, his right. beautiful wife yes. uh, Kim that uh, is telling their story as they are walking. So yes, Mary, that's it. But folks, go to Cole Baptist Church, spend some time. And they're not lengthy. It's not like they're no. Most of them are like 10, 10 15 minutes long. That's right. Yes. And and folks, would you just spend time and to do that and to leave a comment, leave an encouraging comment. Hit that uh, share button. Absolutely, hit that share button. Uh, get those stories out there. And then, and Mary Weddington, uh, which is one of the ladies, a big volunteer here, uh, she said, that's great, Gary. So that's awesome. uh, so, sweet. Much. Go there, watch it, uh, and, and hit the share button and tell somebody about it. But now, here's the thing. Okay, for every one of you that's watching right now, and for every one of you that will watch this in the, in, uh, in the future on the replays, hear what I'm saying. You have a story. Just like Gary, just like Kim, just like Clint. What was the lady's name that did it? Her name was Christy Gross. Christy, just like Christy. Uh, just like me. You don't have to be a pastor. No. You don't have to be a deacon. No. You don't have to be a Sunday school teacher. No. Just a nobody like us. You, all you <laughs> are is just common, ordinary guys and gals yes. that have given your life to Christ. Yes. yes. And, and it's, that change, absolutely. It, it, it's taking... This is how I was taught, okay? Um, Southern Baptists are notorious for coming up with evangelistic programs, okay? And I'm not all about that. No, no. I'm not all about that. It's real simple. Here, here's the deal. If people, let, uh, I want you to hear what I'm saying. And, and Gary, I know you're going to agree with me. When you tell your story, and I'm going to say it again. Everybody has a story. It's about telling people what your life was like before Christ. Yes. What it's like when you accepted Christ. And now what your life, life is like after yes. you gave your life to Christ. Yes. And hopefully somebody that's gone through something similar that you that you've gone through, they can relate to you and yeah. Yeah. you know realize that there is a hope for them as well. You know, and Absolutely. they'll turn their lives over to Christ as well. Absolutely. That's the goal. Well, uh, uh, so many people, uh, and guys, I want your thoughts on this, okay? So you can just, you can light us up here in the comments if you want to. Here, here's the thing. A lot of people, Gary, in, in my work here, good morning, Miss Annie. So glad you're here, sweet lady. Uh, so many people are horrified to tell their story. I mean, you know that. 
Uh, ah, Kim and Merle's on. Good morning. There we go. There's that other half. She's, she's sticking on in. Uh, good morning, Merle. Good morning, Miss Kim. Good morning, Tanya Riggs. I don't see you on, but Mary Weddington does. Good morning. Man, we're just having a big old time this morning. Uh, so, many, so many times, Gary, especially after people have been a believer for a while. They they don't like to tell their story. They don't like to share Christ. Right. I mean that they don't. And I don't know what the deal is. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, but they they get away from it. I, imagine this, and and folks, if you're listening, uh, what if everybody in your church? Good morning, Dana. Uh, Kim, what about you? Your story. Uh, you know that's a great thing. I, I may have to do that, Kim. Thank you for that. Uh, what if everybody in your church, Cold Baptist Church, what if everybody in Ridgewood, okay, and, and you just pick a church, okay, pick a church. What if everybody in one church told their story one time to one person in their community? One time. That's that's I know for our our church, we our congregation is about fifty people that fifty right. other people that have heard the gospel. That have heard the gospel. Yes. And if you could just say, Okay, this is the week we want you to tell your story. Tell it one time to somebody. Yes. And and, and this is it. And you can tell it to them in person, you can tell it to them on the phone. It doesn't matter. Tell your story. Miss Annie Cobb, I tell my story so people can know that I have been through and still they understand me more. Uh, that, see, that's it, Annie. That's it. That's the whole deal. It's telling your story. Because here, okay, here's the, y'all going to get me preaching, okay? And and that's never been the, the fact, but I'm probably going to end up preaching this morning. Here's the thing. The, the job that God Took. And job's not the right word here. To save us from the filth, the evil, the unholiness, the unrighteousness. And yet God loved us enough that here's the illustration. Here's the illustration I like to use. Imagine the biggest vat that you can imagine, this big cauldron, okay? And in it, it it's like you see somebody stirring it, okay? And, and it is black. It is thick. It's, it's, it's almost tar-like, okay? And that black tar-like, is our sins. It's all of the filthy thoughts, the images that flash through our mind. It's the anger. It's the hatred. It's the bitterness. It's Scripture says this. It's the lust of the flesh. It's the lust of the eyes. And it's the pride of life. All of that is in this cauldron. Okay? And we are in that cauldron, okay? And I, I, I'm, I'm going to preach, Gary. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. No, don't be sorry. Absolutely not. Here, here's the thing. And Paul is just notorious. And Paul writes this, okay? This is Ephesians chapter 2, folks, if you just happen to be chasing along with me. Ephesians chapter 2, Paul is telling the church at Ephesus, he says this, and you, again, he's talking to the believer. And so th this is you, if you are a Christ follower this morning, if you've given your life to Christ, this is he's talking to you. And you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, 
According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Okay, that's us, okay? But you know how you see movies of people that are floating in a pool or floating in the water when they're dead and they're literally, they're upside down and they're lifeless? Okay, Gary, my, my image, and when I read this, is us before Christ floating in this vat of evil, of sin, lifeless, lifeless. And then verse 4, but God, yes. but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. It is at that moment that Jesus loved us so much that he literally sticks his hand into that cauldron of sin and snatches that dead body out and breathes that breath of life in. Isn't that amazing? And that's amazing. <laughs> that. Despite that, ourselves. It does, in spite of ourselves. Yes. That is who we are in Christ. And so we have a story to tell because that is us in that cauldron. And then Jesus does that. And then we've got that life on the other yes. side of that. And so, folks, hear what I'm saying. You got a story. Oh, sweet Jesus, you got a story to tell. Is it the same as mine? No. I don't want it to be like mine. I want yours to be yours. Don't It don't need to be like Gary's. It don't need to be like Kim's. It don't need to be like anybody else's because your story is your story. Yes, it's precious. And, 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 and guys, hear, hear what I'm saying. Somebody needs to hear your story. Somebody needs to hear it. That's, that's right. That's right. Somebody's yes. going to have a similarity to your story. And, and, uh, okay, you know, Gary, we, we've got to get beyond... We, we got, okay, we got to fall back in love with Jesus. Yes. Yes. It's, it's, it's really where it is. Sharing his gospel. It's sharing his gospel. That's right. We, we've got to fall back in love with Jesus. Because one word, when we fall, okay, when you, when you have a girlfriend, when then you get a fiance, Then you get married. You, you, all you talk about is your girl. Yeah. I, and I'm talking through. You, you talk to all your guy friends. You talk to your parents. I mean, anybody you talk to, oh, it's all oh, she, ooh, ooh. And it's all that ooh, ooh stuff. <laughs> and same thing on the girl side of it. I mean, when she's dating, she's talking about her fella. You know, and she's wearing his clothes and wearing his rings or, you know, whatever the kids do today. I don't know. Uh, and then she's engaged, and it's all of the now that it's the wedding prep, and everybody knows it. And she's oh, I can't believe I'm just in love. I got that special guy, and all this. I mean, you see this. Yes. And then they're married, and it's all okay. And the, it, it, we're infatuated with it. Okay. We need to be that way with Jesus Christ. Absolutely, absolutely. To where we can't help but tell somebody else about. It. Yeah, you know, in every conversation, that should be. A topic topic that comes up. You know, oh my God! Every, every bit of it. you know, uh, every time, you know, uh, there's there's. I try to turn conversations around to that, right? Uh, and and I'm not always successful at it, but you right. know, I, I I somehow yeah try to you know if Jesus doesn't come up in the conversation, then then he's not on your mind, you know. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right. You know if. if yeah. Right. If, if your girlfriend's on your mind, you're going to talk about her. Mm. If Jesus is on your mind, then you're going to talk about it. I, uh, I'm going to throw a term at you, okay? 
Uh, hey guys, are y'all are y'all enjoying this wonder? We're kind of a little bit off track. We're, and I'm gonna just be real, real honest with you. Uh, we're we're not gonna get to First Samuel today. Uh, so you, I want you to encourage you to go ahead and read the text and enjoy that, and we'll pick that back up tomorrow because I'm having a blast right here kicking kicking with Gary, uh, and I hope you are too. Um, I'm gonna throw a term at you, Gary, and it's called relational evangelism. Have you ever heard that term? Uh, no, I have not. Okay. Um, it, 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 it kind of materialized back many years ago. And uh, as I was as I was sharing with you actually before we were live, uh, my, my family and I owned a coffee shop. Okay. And uh, we just, we were in, in a town that uh, had a four-year university. And as I started to just kind of see what God was doing, there was no church focused on reaching the college students. No, in whole town, no. Now, I, and I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not laying blame. It just wouldn't happen, okay? And so, man, uh, we knew God was making changes in our life. I mean, we just didn't know what it was because I've been in ministry for years. Uh, and, of course, I have had a passion for coffee, unlike no, most people comp comprehend for as long as I've been born. And... We just felt like that it was time to step away from vocational ministry and to do something focused on uh, reaching the college students. Now, the target was 18 to 25. That's the, the target range. And so we, and we actually talked about this even when we were as part of vocational ministry. We opened what appeared to be a coffee shop and an ice cream shop. And it was in-house. There was no drive-in. You had to come in, okay? And, you know, lots of seating area. But what it was was a ministry center. And so we had Bible studies there. We had churches that would come in and they would bring their Sunday school classes or some churches would bring their staff and they'd have staff meetings there or whatever. And relational evangelism comes into play when you can just literally sit across the table from somebody and have a cup of coffee and you're just talking about life. And you're able then to get into that conversation and to open up and tell your story. And, and I have seen more people come to Christ in that type of setting. Not, and I'm not talking so much about it in our coffee shop, but, but, it, but yes, we did. I mean, we had tons of people turn to Christ now. But because it was an intimate one-on-one -on -one setting that you're being real, you're not put on, you know, it's not like you're the Sunday school teacher, the preacher, or whatever. Right. You're just being real. There's no pressure. There's no... That, that's right. right. And uh, uh, I, I have seen lives changed vastly. And, and I use this old adage, and, and, and Gary, I think you'll, you'll uh, appreciate this. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so, totally agree with that. and so when, when you are invested in an individual, when, I mean, when you truly care about them, and I'm not talking about a, a Christian, I'm talking about just anybody in general, sure. but in specific, a lost person, when they understand that you really genuinely care and they get it, they understand that. That you're not out here being a, uh, you know, a Jesus thumper or a Bible thumper or whatever right. the case may be, and and you know some people just want to just shove Jesus down your throat. That's not it, you know. I mean, G Jesus is, it's it, it's everything. Okay, it's it's who we are. It's not just what I do on Sundays. It, okay, it, it's everything. And so when 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 people understand, and they they get it, they know that you care, then they will listen. To what you know. That makes complete sense. That makes complete sense. And you so can feel that 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 love coming that we received from Jesus Christ, and right. you can feel that love coming from you. Absolutely. You know, 
Absolutely. Yes. And and then now what that does is that allows you to uh, you know maybe they got a, a problems with a car and you help them with a the car. Uh, you know maybe you guys go fishing together, you go hunting or or whatever the case may be. I mean it doesn't matter. But you know you're hanging out. Well, he's really not that bad of a guy, and he goes down to that church down on the corner or, or whatever, you know. And so they understand that you're not this, you know, you're not up on a pedestal. You're just you're them, okay. You've just understood what's real and what's not, right? Uh, and then it's because of, because of that relationship, okay, that you're able to share the gospel. Sure. And to tell your story, and that's where that term relational evangelism I like that. I like that. comes into play. Goes right along with humility. Uh, oh my gosh! You know, yeah, 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 yeah. And so, um, and, and in all honesty, that's really how I have tried to model my ministry, really, um, because I've been been humbled and been blessed to be able to share the gospel and lead more people to Christ. In a city, it's just kind of like what we're doing right now. I mean, we're just we're just hanging out here, yeah. to be honest with you, yeah. and and uh, to that or you know grabbing coffee, grabbing lunch or something, uh, in those type settings, than I ever have seen people come to the altar on Sunday mornings. Really? Wow. That's I mean, yeah, and and so now don't get me wrong, you got you do that. That's 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 what we do, but in, lives are impacted. When we commit to that relationship, that personal, that's absolutely. right. That's right. Because it's at that point that you don't drop them, because now that they're part of that family, oh sure, of God, absolutely. And so they they're no longer a number. It's it's no longer well. I got them saved. Now I'll move on to something no, else. No, you keep investing. You keep uh, investing. I'll tell you what. Since since we've been saved, and we've only been saved like like four years now, mm -hmm. and. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, we have people that continue to pour into us and, uh, sure. you know, sure. um, just continue to love us. And, you know, if it, it's just been amazing. Um, I can't even describe the, the, the love that we've received from other people that you know, sure. when we walked into that church, you know, we were dirty and filthy and, and, right. and we were like, man, these people ain't going to love us. Right. And, uh, they continue to pour into us and just love us, you know, absolutely. And, absolutely. And it's it's incredible. It's amazing. Well, here here's the thing. There's a there's a misconception. Okay, this is gym theology here. Okay, this is just my opinion only. Okay, but I believe there's a strong misconception about Christians, and I think it's a double edged sword. I think there's a misconception about Christians from Christians. Okay? Because some some of us put us up on that pedestal. Right. And the well you ain't got Jesus, so you're down here and we're up here. Um, we're sinners. Oh yeah. And, and, and I'm sure and I, I bet you've seen that. Okay. Yes, yes. And then I think there's a there's another side of that coin that is a misconception from the lost to thinking that, well, I can never be that. I'm not that. I've done too much wrong. I can never be forgiven. Or I don't want to be like that. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> and so I, I do. I, I think there is a misconception on both sides of that coin that... Uh, and that's all Satan. It is. That, I mean, that, that is a filter that Satan's put on our, our, our blinders here that we can, you know, have yeah. see through. Um, but it, it's just sad. It's just that, sad. That person that feels uh, like they don't want to be something else, uh, I think it's fear keeping them from, you know, hey, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to to love other people. So, you know, they need to learn to love themselves. Right. And, and the only way that's going to happen is through Jesus Christ. Because... Uh, I did. I was in that same boat. Right. You know, I, I, I was scared to death. You know. Right. Um, and it wasn't until 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 Jesus entered into my my life 
right that I started to love myself and then I could love other people and and uh, you know just just let that old past behind you know uh, oh absolutely uh, yeah, it's glad you I'm, I'm glad you used that terminology okay because um, I'm, I'm in the middle of a series uh, I'm, I'm teaching through the birth of of the New Testament church in the book of Acts. Mm. Okay. I'm in Acts chapter two. And I don't know if you've caught that on the replay or not. You can't watch that. I don't know. But uh, I'm using it with the illustration that before Acts chapter two, okay, we lived in this type of a world. Okay. It's not a world. But when Acts chapter two and the day of Pentecost took place, okay, then there was a, and here's the illustration, a seismic shift in religiosity because we were no longer the yes. world we lived in. Yes. Because now Jesus is here and things are not the same. Okay, mm. that's, that's the, the whole illustration. And then you see that in how they conducted themselves. We know in Acts 2.41, in, in Acts 2 41, we see that this is the backside of Peter's sermon the Holy Spirit has already come in. They've already been able to talk uh, in uh, foreign tongues, not not uh, uh, unknown tongues, but foreign tongues, so that everybody heard. And Acts two forty one tells us that uh, you know, about three thousand souls were saved. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then Acts two forty two, I mean, right after that, starts with the words "and they." So, Continuing and on. they continued steadfastly. In, and it goes into tell us. And so there was a, there's a size of shit. There's a break. Okay. It's literally like there's a, a crack that separates us. Okay. And then you take that and then you apply it to what Paul says. And Paul says that we are to put off that old man. That's right. Because we are no longer that guy. We are new. Yes. We're all new. Uh, uh, your bride's talking. Let's see here. I, I always felt I wasn't good enough, but it was just an excuse. I ran from God. And exactly. I mean, Kim, you're spot on. Um, and, and I think most of us, most of us would agree with that. So the thing is, and, and, and Kim, uh, this is a, a, this is a hug for me to you to simply say this. A lot of people will not open up and share that. Sure. Okay. Uh, to be, uh, to be open to say I wasn't good enough. I, I get that. I understand that because I felt that way too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and it, it comes back to sharing your story. It, it just comes back to sharing your story. But we have to, and again, you use the term, we have to put off that old guy. Absolutely. Because I'm not him. That's right. That person's dead. Yeah, you got, you got, gone. That's right. Well, and it, okay, back to my analogy, when God reached in, snatched us out of that vat of sin, I don't want to go back into that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. Uh, you know, and, and so it's just, um, Christy said it really well. She had that, that Saul Paul, uh, conversion, Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and I thought that was really neat how she said that, but, but that's exactly how it was, you know, that, mm -hmm. that, that's who I was mm -hmm. and now this is who I am. Oh, sure. You know, sure. Man, 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 man. Yeah, it has been a blast. I'm going to flip the camera back around here to me. Uh, if I can hit the right button, here we go. All right. Hey guys, y'all had a good morning. Uh, we have man, man, this has been good, Gary. It's been great. This has been I this expected. has been good. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I like I, I like being real. You know, that's one of the things I like about hanging out here on the chat. It's just uh, it's typically just me, and I, it's just me. You know, I'm I'm it's me being me, right. uh, and all of my foolishness and all of my uh, clutter. Uh, we love it. It's just it's just me being me, and so I love this. This has been a great day, uh, folks. Make sure, okay, make sure that you get in and you read your text. It is. Uh, let me just go ahead and give it to you now. It is First Samuel chapter four, and I'll go ahead and tell you. Uh, I kind of just hit it up. Uh, the word. Okay, remember the battle yesterday where we lost like thirty some odd thousand people, or the Philistines slaughtered the uh, the Israelites. It was just really bad, and the sons of Eli were killed. Y'all remember that? Okay. This text that you're going to read today is the word has gotten back to Eli about his sons, okay? And they pass away. They have been killed. 
Word gets to him, and he, and also word gets back to Eli that the Ark of the Covenant has been captured, and Eli dies. And so that is the text. But the, the interesting thing here is that, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and read verse 18 here. I, I think we need to hit that. This is verse chapter 4, verse 18. Then it happened when he made mention of the Ark of God. In other words, that, that, this was the trigger point. That Eli fell off the seat that he was sitting on backwards by the side of the gate, and his neck was broken, and he died. For the man was old and heavy. Now, you, you, you almost kind of miss this, but he was a very old man, and we've already known this through the text. This was a very big fellow. He was heavy. Uh, the word heavy here plays two, two parts. It's got, it's got a dual meaning. He was heavy physically, but there was a heavy weight on him spiritually because he knew the problems that was in his house. So, uh, great text this morning. Uh, Kim, a spirit leads you. We'd love to see your stories. That's right. That's right. Anybody that has stories, share your stories. That is good. Folks, that is all I've got today. If you get out today, please be safe. Thank you for hanging out with me uh, in the chat. And Gary, my word, what a good morning. Yes, it just, is. Uh, just, uh, man, it, it is good. Oh, oh hey, hey, hey. Uh, 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 while I'm thinking about it, uh, what is today? Tuesday, Tuesday. Uh, the chat, uh, the rest of the week, Lord willing, and then tomorrow night, 6.30. Whoa, man, we're headed back into the book of Galatians as we are uh, just watching Paul just come unwound on the defense of the gospel. So hang out with me tomorrow night, 6.30, right here uh, for Wednesday Night Live. And then, oh my goodness, please, if you can physically be here, be on this campus Sunday morning as we continue our Seismic Shift series. As we are diving deeper, we are now right in the thick of Acts 2.42 and the birth of the New Testament church and what it looks like. Uh, if you have not been able to catch that and to uh, uh, be with us or even be with us live, please make sure you go back and watch those uh, messages that lead up to this. You can find it here uh, in our video uh, library on Facebook, or you can go to our uh uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, just go to YouTube uh, and look up Ridgewood Baptist Church for City, and they are all there. They're in a playlist. You can watch them back to back to back to back, or you can go to our uh, website, lovemyrbc.com, and you can find them all right there on the sermon page. So that is all coming up. Uh, I have amazing news, and that is, uh, uh, you guys have been uh, listening to me. I have been privileged to serve as the chairman of the, the search committee for our association. And uh, I, you know that last night was the big night that we had. And I am overwhelmed to, to say that we uh, unanimously called uh, a brand new associational missionary last night uh, for our association. Uh, his name is Rondell Richardson, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on Rondell. You're going to hear enough about him in the future. And he is coming to be our new associational missionary. He'll be here in just, uh, just a few weeks. Uh, he and his family's got to get moved. And and I'm just, uh, you know, Gary, last night was amazing. It was, wasn't it? It was just, it was just a good night. Uh, one of the things that uh, our, yeah, our yeah, team awesome. had just prayed for is that we would take that special called meeting. It was a business meeting. Let's just be real, but that we would turn it into a church, turn it into church service. And so there was just such a spirit of worship, a spirit of, of love, of unity it was awesome. in, in that building that, uh, uh, to be radically honest with you, I have not seen in our association. And so last night was monumental for us. And the worship was phenomenal. Uh, you can go to our associational page, Tri-County Baptist Association, and you can check out those uh, videos. When I said there, there was two broadcasts last night. You can check on that. You can actually get to hear uh, Brother Rondell and hear his heart uh, as he was uh, was interviewed and, and uh, shared. And uh, it was a unanimous vote from yeah, our associational. God, and God. and that is, that is a, that's a God thing. There's nothing more than that. It was a God thing, and he honored our prayers. And uh, this he's a good guy. He is very nice. Uh, he's wife's good. wonderful, too. And he's a good guy. Uh, 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 he, let, let's just say he did more than just check all the boxes, okay? Uh, this was the guy that God just, he, he, 
he, he genuinely loved God. He come up in the pot. I mean, there was no doubt he was that one that kept rising to the top of the resumes, you know, just consistently. And so it was just, it was a no-brainer. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Thank you so much, Kim. We love you bunches. I appreciate that. All right, guys, I am out of here. You have a tremendous Tuesday. If you do get out, please be safe. Wear your mask, social distance. Enjoy the sunshine, okay? Enjoy that, that big ball of, uh, of brightness that is in the sky. If you need anything, we're here at the office today, 633-1121. And uh, if you do see anybody today, tell them your story. All right. Tell them your story. I'm out of here, guys. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.